we're on. Okay, can Apple win back music? They used to be the king. They used to be the most important technology company in music. And can they win back the crown? I logged into their Apple Music for Artists portal last week, and they had the Listening Now statistic updating live. And I had never seen that before. And at any given moment, it was about one-tenth the amount of people listening on Spotify. And I think that's a pretty honest statistic because I've never promoted either platform. I usually send people to YouTube. So it's a fair fight. And Apple's the second biggest streaming platform. And they're one-tenth the engagement as Spotify right now. It's, it's fair to say Spotify has won. It's 2024. Can we say Spotify won? We didn't know if they were going to win back in the good old days when Apple was making silhouette iPod ads and it just felt good. People were grooving. Apple's got great design. They were the kings. I was there. It was iTunes. It was iPods, okay? Music was rocking. Uno, dos, tres, catorce, as you two once said. Let's go back to when Apple won it. They won it from Sony, the Sony Walkman. In 2001, they dropped the iPod. That was kind of cool. Looked cool. But the real revolution happened in 2003 with the iTunes Store. And this is when you could buy an individual track. 2011, Spotify hits the states. Okay, and this was another, actually a technological disruption because cell phone internet connections had gotten good enough to stream music. So it wasn't like Apple was just stupid in 2003. There was an actual technological shift that Spotify jumped on with the streaming not the downloading boom Spotify starts taking the crown from Apple Apple's not afraid but it's becoming clear that they're losing and in 2015 they launch Apple music and they launch it and it's just a Spotify clone with the same payment model and everything and Daniel Ek the CEO of Spotify famously tweeted oh okay like you just you just ripped us off but everyone was saying apple could win because they had everyone's credit card it's freaking apple they got the design well the dust has the dust has settled it's fair to say the dust has settled we're here it's 2024 spotify won spotify won they won the network effect artists want to be where the fans are fans want to be where the artists are that's Spotify, okay? Everyone is hoping, including Apple, for some new technological disruption to hit that they can jump on and take it back from Spotify. But there's not another one. We're living in the dream. The dream was always having all the music at your fingertips. We're freaking living the dream out here. There's nothing really coming down the pipe. Oh, spatial audio? Now, this is like the Atkins diet. It, it's like surround sound, quad. It keeps reviving under another name. It's not going to beat stereo. Two ears, two speakers since 1957, baby, from the first stereo records. That's what's remained consistent through every format change. Oh, maybe it's AI. No, no, no. Humans are obsessed with humans making music. You know, that's the bass layer. The, the keyboardist in Wolfpack... Woody Goss, he was getting spooked by AI in music. Then he said, you know what? Computers, he, he plays chess. Computers have been beating humans in chess for a little while now, but the sport of chess is bigger than ever. And I said, yeah, you're right. That, that is what people love about music. They, they want to rally behind a human. You know, I'm sure a robot can high jump higher than someone or is a better gymnast. Are we tuning into the robot Olympics? No, we like... Human, Human's stereo, 1957. There's no tech disruption coming. What's the next disruption? I'm gonna tell you. The next disruption is the payment model. 
Okay, if, if Apple wants to take back the crown, they have to identify where Spotify is weak. Okay, that's what Apple did back in 2003 with the iTunes store. They said, aren't these labels afraid of piracy? They need to go with us. You got to hit them where they're weak. Okay, where's Spotify weak? Their payment model. Artists don't love it. Fans don't love it. No one understands it. And by the way, Apple Music will bandy about their higher per stream rate. This is actually a massive cell phone. Okay, there, this, is, this is them just showing everyone that their platform has less engagement. Okay, so don't fall for that sleight of hand. Now, what, what model could disrupt Spotify's payment model? I, and I'm about to tell you the new deal. Okay, the first deal was iTunes... 70 30 split okay they gave 70 percent to the artist they took 30. this was revolutionary and in steve jobs biography which i haven't read in a long time i remember the scene where he's just sitting at a conference table and says it says yeah let's do that so this guy just blurted it out and now for 20 years that's what we're all doing that's what spotify claims to do so i'm gonna blurt out the new model why not this is your new mantra 90-10 fan-centric. 90-10 fan-centric. And let me explain it. Artist gets 90%, Apple takes 10%. Fan-centric means whatever the fan listens to, that's where their money goes to. So if you're in a coma for 29 days out of the month, and on the last day you wake up and stream the final countdown once, Apple takes their 10%, and then that $9 left, that goes to that artist who did the final countdown. Makes sense. And, I, and let me tell you, it also completely disincentivizes and makes it way more costly to commit streaming fraud. So you have this elegant solution to the streaming fraud problem, which is a big problem that no, the labels won't admit and Spotify won't admit. It's actually a big problem because you can make a lot of money committing streaming fraud right now. It's very economical. What is Spotify's model? It's called the pro rata 70-30, okay? 70-30 pro rata. I means Spotify takes their 30%, 70% goes to artists. Pro rata means they pool all the money together, subscription money, and divvy it up by who got the most streams, which gets real confusing and unfair with the fraud and certain fans that are light listeners they're you know they don't have as much power as a fan centric model where the fan now has more power over where their money goes who doesn't love that everyone loves that and the industry insiders are going to say the labels won't go for it they won't go for you uh fan centric if you go to 90 10 They'll do whatever model you want, okay? Because they're just going to be making more money. Spotify would then have to match you, Apple. They would have to match those terms, and they can't. They don't make any money. They, you know, they're a $40 billion company, but they've lost a couple billion dollars since they opened up shop. So, I don't know. They, they don't have any hardware to sell, okay? They, they're just... I don't know what they're selling. They're, you know, they're, they just own music, and that's really valuable. And that's why you got to win back the crown, okay? Because there are other sites, YouTube. I'm sure there's more music streaming on YouTube and Facebook anyway, but we all know Spotify owns music. They have the crown in music. I know Apple's not a charity. What's it worth to win back music? Well, it's worth the money. You know, you make more money, I guess. And, you know, you'll be giving up some money because Apple currently cuts a 52.48 with the artist. It's even worse than iTunes. I, I didn't even know that. I had to Google it. But what's it worth to win it back? And it's like real estate. It's like all things. It's like, oh, Bob Dylan lives two streets over. It's like, who cares? It's like people really care. It makes a huge difference to have artists up in your shiz. You know, it's like it's all people care about. Okay, so... You win back that crown, that's the first thing. You gotta win back the crown, and then the artists and designers 
follow and everything gets better because the platform's kind of whatever right now. Maybe I'm a bit naive. You know, I don't know. Maybe Apple's too bureaucratic to change the model, you know. But I believe there's a lunatic somewhere at Apple who really wants to do this. A lunatic who gets fired up when the Steve Jobs clips hit his or her TikTok. And he's talking about we don't ship junk. And we can't do it. We just can't ship junk. Artists want to come home. They want to come home to Data Apple, okay? We've been trapped in a lime green Airbnb font Swedish prison for 10 years. We want to come home, okay? We're ready, okay? And Swedish prison, it's not that bad, but we want to come home. We want to be free. This, this would set off a massive artistic renaissance. People would be making more money to reinvest in their projects. So who's really losing? Uh, it's still unclear. Listen, Apple was built on music, okay? Apple, music, right? Amazon, books, Facebook, photos, Twitter, insults, Google, maps. Okay, Rand McNally has entered the chat here. Okay, we got to get back to what built this company. Spotify was built on music too. And where is it leading? It's not, they're not selling any iPods. I, 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 I shot live at Madison Square Garden on an iPhone. I've mixed every record on a MacBook. You get this artist ecosystem back, back to you and you're selling more stuff. I think this may be the way to disrupt Spotify is through the, I think that is the next major disruption because it ain't tech. And then the artists, a lot of cool, wacky stuff will happen where people will take their music off services and cool stuff, you know? That'll be the next decade. Let's see if Apple will get in the ring, put monthly listeners up there. Every, every service is afraid to put monthly listeners up because they know Spotify's kick in their butt but if they put it up if they get back in the ring they can take back the belt from spotify maybe we don't know but let's see what happens this decade let's go let's go